Hello, Corey Rawson, class of 2021. Congratulations on being halfway through your senior year of high school. I have a senior at my house and I cannot believe how quickly it is going. I know that your year is not looking quite like what you thought maybe your senior year would, but I hope that you are enjoying every moment of it and making the best out of this, um, this year. So my name is Deb Ebert and I am the Scholarship and Donor Services Coordinator at the Finley Hancock County Community Foundation. And we have about 140 scholarships here in our foundation that we award um, to students anywhere from students attending a vocational school all the way through uh, graduate and postgraduate school. So we have a lot of opportunities and I wanna introduce you to our scholarship application process today. Um, last year in 2020, we gave out about $370,000 um, in scholarship money. And um, so the opportunities out there are great for you. You have um, there at Corey Rawson, you have some scholarships that are very specific for Corey Rawson students that we award. Um, and there are also a lot of other scholarships that we hold here that are specific for Hancock County students um, in general. So there may be an opportunity to qualify for one scholarship or for multiple scholarships. We did have um, a couple students last year who and earned anywhere from five to seven um, scholarships they were awarded last year for this their freshman year of college this year. So there's lots of opportunities for you. And I, I, I would just like to introduce you to this process so that you um, can take this opportunity. So I'm gonna share my screen with you and walk you through where we're at. So what you'll need to do is start out by going to our website, which is www.community-foundation.com, which you'll see up here at the top, and then you'll come to our home screen. Along the top, there are these links. You will see scholarships, so you need to click on that, and it'll take you to our scholarship page. What you'll see here is there is a link right here that you can click on that and it will show you all of the scholarships that we hold. It breaks them down by um, the school. If you're involved in Millstream, there are Millstream scholarships, Corey Rawson, Hancock County, Finley City. So it really breaks it down for you. It lets you know if there's certain GPA requirements or a major or a university that you're attending. It, it gives you a lot of information on that. So that's just a great resource for you um, to take a look at. But when you wanna get to the application, you're gonna come over here to the side to the application types. Click on that and it's going to bring you to this common application. Ours is a universal application. You complete it one time and it matches you to any of the scholarships that we hold here at the foundation. Now your high school might have their own scholarships as well that you'll need to check with your guidance counselor about, um, but um, these are the ones that are awarded through the Community Foundation. So you'll see this big blue, big blue apply today button. You'll click on that. And it's going to take you, sorry, it's giving me some information. Um, it's going to take you to the logon page. This is where you're going to create a new account. You have to create a, an account before you can get started. You'll also see here along the side, we've got some tutorials, video and written tutorials of the application process and walking through it. So if you ever have um, trouble or, or you forget something, you can always come back to this and, and take a look at it. It'll, it's a link that goes directly to that, that tutorial. Now I'm going to go to my, my page um, simply because if I log on and create an account within what's called the live site, your site, it's gonna really mess things up. So I'm gonna do it on my, on my site. So uh, create new account is what you will do. Then this is your, your account page. This is where you're gonna get registered. You have things that are required and that will have an asterisk. Um, so this has to be done before you can continue on with the application. So I'm going to say, Stephen Scholar. Now, I am going to give you a suggestion and this is um, from previous knowledge in this, in this role. Right here for the email, you need to get a grown-up email address. A lot of times students will um, 
share their school, their high school email account, which is fine. We can reach out to you now. But if you earn a scholarship that is a renewal, the next year in May, when you're finishing up your freshman year of college, I'm going to need to reach out to you about that scholarship. And if it's your high school email account, you may not have access to that. And so I can't get in touch with you. So it's really important for you at some point um, now that you're graduating from high school and going to be an adult that you get a grown up email address. Um, and some of you have already done that because of the application process for colleges. You're finding that that's important. Um, that's just a little piece of friendly advice there. Um, so phone numbers. addresses. County, we are in Hancock County. You're going to give us your birth date. Once you have any of that information um, plugged in with the ask that's required the asterisk, then you're going to click next. And it's going to give you a place to put in a password. You need to do this password yourself. I will not have access to it. So if you forget what it is that you have, um, you can't come to me later, email me, call me and say, I don't, I don't know my password. Can you tell me what it is? I do not have access to that. So please write it down somewhere. Um, again, if you get a scholarship awarded to you that is a renewal, this is the same site you'll come to next year for this. So to remember that email, that password, you need to make sure you write that down someplace. and then you're gonna create account. You'll see another little pop-up and then you go to continue. Here you're gonna see information about the scholarship. The deadline for this is February 3rd of 2021 at 12 noon. So your deadline is quickly approaching. So if you've not started in this process, you need to get busy with it. Um, it's not a complicated application, but it does take some time. So don't wait until 1130 um, in the morning on February 3rd to start this process. You need to get going on it now. So when you're ready, then you click apply, this blue apply button. And we get started. You will see, you can click on that contact info tab and that gives you all of your information that you just put in there. You'll also see this contact email history. This is something you can log back in at any time and you can click on this and it'll show you any emails that have either been sent on your behalf or through our, through our system, um, just to kind of keep track of, of any information that maybe you aren't sure if an email went out. So let's get started with the application. If you are a child or a grandchild of an employee or a board member here at the foundation, you are not eligible to apply for scholarships. So that's why we have this question here. I'm gonna say no so that we can move on. And I said I was Stephen Scholar, so I'm male. Notice they are asterisked. That means they're required. Some of them are easy, just click, click, click type questions. Yes, I'm a US citizen. County, this is a drop down because we have scholarship scholarships that are available for all of these counties, but we are Hancock County. Birth date, I said it was 10-01-2002, oops. And student classification, you all will be graduating high school seniors this year. You are graduating high school seniors this year. So you're gonna click that. This next question, do you wish to be considered for need-based scholarships? Some of our scholarships are specifically, um, one of the requirements is that a student be in need financially for the scholarship money. They might get preference. So if you want to be considered for those scholarships, you need to mark yes. If you mark yes, recognize there's gonna be more that you need to do here in a little bit and I'll show you that. But if you don't, if you mark no, you won't have to do anything more, but you also are eliminating yourself from some of those scholarships that you might be eligible for because they're need-based. So I'm gonna click yes, because I want you to see what else we need to do. Then there's a place for your parent guardian information. So you need to list that information for us um, for several reasons. If I'm needing to get in touch with you and your email address isn't, isn't falling through, um, then I have somebody else I can reach out to via email or 
or phone. Um, also in August, any of the students who have been awarded scholarships, they and their parents get recognition in a big um, flyer that we put in the courier. So in order for your parents to um, just be recognized for helping you get to where you're at, um, we like to have their information as well. So, Hmm. I'm just making stuff up here. I only want so you're putting in all of this information about. Um, at least one parent or guardian. Place of employment, I'm going to say Cooper Tire. Occupation, um, Tire Builder. Then you've got a place for a second parent or guardian information. You can mark no and you're done. If you mark yes, then you're going to have that same information to put in about second parent. So again, it, it depends on how your parents feel about it and, and also um, them being able to be recognized um, later on for, for helping you get where you're at. So that's completely up to you. I'm gonna mark no so that we can move on. This question right here, this is where the information comes in because I marked up here, yes, I wanna be considered for need-based scholarships. It comes down to this then question. And this is where you're going to need to um, submit your student aid report from your FAFSA. A lot of you I'm sure have already done this. It's part of your college application process. So you probably already have that downloaded somewhere. So you're just gonna upload that file, your student aid report right here in the spot. That's not what really what it is, but, um, and then on that SAR, you also have an EFC score. I'm sure you guys are, are getting familiar with all of this terminology. So you're gonna put that doll, that number, the EFC number in this spot, okay? If you marked no, you will not do this, but remember you also then not be qualifying for some of those scholarships that are available. So now I'm gonna look at the school that um, I'm wanting to go to. So I'm going to say uh, University of Toledo. So you will need this sort of information in terms of room and board. This one right here for textbooks and supplies, that's just a, a general idea um, because textbooks can range and, and, and all the supplies that you need. But you will need to know what the tuition and room and board is for this, the, at least your first school of choice or um, the school that you've committed to go to. And then are you financing your education without help from parents or other individuals? We'll say, no, I'm not. Who's helping you? Parents. And they are helping me with about half. And then this spot right here is if there's anything more you wanna tell the selection committee about your situation. Um, there might've been um, a, a illness or something due to COVID that uh, caused some problems financially for your family. This would be a great place to put that it's not required. Not everybody wants to share that sort of information, so it's not a required thing. But if you want to share why you feel that it would be really important for you um, to have this scholarship based on a financial need, this would be the place to let the selection committee know that. So then your high school information, your high school city is Rawson. Ohio, this is a drop down. We do have other scholarships in, in other states, so that's why we've got those. High school county, again, is Hancock. Your graduation year from high school, 2021. The high school you're attending, this is a drop down. And it's a drop down because all of these schools have scholarships available to them. So, the Corey Rawson, you have some scholarships that are specific to Corey Rawson students. So, making sure that you put what school you're from um, is going to help to qualify you for some of those. School district in which you reside, if you are residing in Corey Rawson, living in Corey Rawson School District, you're going to put that. Maybe you are open enrollment from somewhere else, um, but 
you're going to put where you reside and what school you're attending. High school GPA, we're going to say a 3.6. Now, these next questions do have asterisks. They are required, um, but depending on how you answer them will depend on if there are other questions you have to answer. So I'm going to show you that. I'm going to click yes to all of these so that you can see what, what we're looking at later on. Did you participate in athletics in high school? Yes. Clubs and extracurriculars? Yes. Yes, I took some college courses like CCP classes. Um, I did take some of those. Some of our um, selection committees like to see, you know, how competitive were you academically at school? Um, so that's, that's why we have that listed there. Um, ACT, SAT scores are not necessarily um, required this year from some, uh, sorry, from some of the universities. So we are not making it a required question on our application. If you've taken it and you wanna share your score, that's fine. Um, if you didn't take it because of COVID and all of the testing being canceled, it's not required here. So we're gonna say I took it, got a 24. Yes, I was involved in church activities. Um, yes, I volunteered in the community. And now this is a spot for any awards or honors that you have got in high school. Maybe you were out, outstanding art student. I spelled that wrong. Maybe you were student of the month. Uh, maybe you were on AB honor roll. I'm having trouble today, sorry. So what you're going to do here is any awards or honors that you have received in high school, list those here. What year did you get that, um, that honor, that award? Um, so put as much information in here as, as you can think about. This might be a time to you know, sit down with your parents and say, okay, what were some things? Maybe you don't remember something that you got from your freshman year, but I'm sure your parents do because they're so proud. So um, just list that information here for the selection committee to take a look at. This is extracurriculars activities. This is because I answered yes to this question up here about extracurriculars. If I had answered no, this question wouldn't be here. So again, it's gonna depend on what you answer as to how much more you might have to do. But that's that much more information that the selection committees are getting about you, which is exactly what you want them to have. So extracurricular activities, some of these are listed very specific because they're criteria criteria for certain scholarships. So that's why we've got these. Maybe you were involved in extracurriculars, but none of these, you would just say none of the above. We're gonna say that I was involved in National Honor Society and um, volunteered with a Han Hancock Historical and Habitat for Humanity. Extracurriculars, this is where you're going to list them. What sort of extracurriculars did you do? Were there certain clubs in school? Were you involved in student council? Um, did you um, help build a home for Habitat? Did you um, volunteer uh, reading at the elementary school there at Corey? What sorts of things did you do? And how often did you do that? How many years in high school did you do that? Um, list all of this information. These are the things that the selection committee are looking at. How involved were you? Um, what, all, what all did you do outside of just your academics? So that's what we're gonna say I did. This question here, again, athletics has to do because I answered yes to an earlier question. I said, yes, I was involved in athletics in high school. So I have this question to answer. If you weren't involved in high school athletics and you marked no, you will not see any of these sports questions. Not a problem, but we marked yes, so it's in here. So I'm gonna say that I um, played baseball and football and I ran track. So then it asks me how many years, I played all four years. And yes, I did play varsity sports. This is where you're going to give details about that. What sports did you play? How many years did you play it in school? Um, were you a captain? Did you have some sort of leadership role? Um, did you earn any awards in that particular sport? That sort of thing. Did you go to state? Um, whatever information you wanna give about those, those involvements when it comes to athletics in high school, this is where you're gonna type it in. How many different varsity sports did you play? I think I said I played three. Um, this question, um, how many years did you play the varsity sport? 
So, you know, if, if I was in that varsity sport all four years, I'd put four. If I was in it for two years, I'm going to put two. I'm going to say I was in it three. And yes, I did participate in a varsity sport prior to my senior year. And what did I earn a varsity letter in? I think I said football and track and then other because I had baseball in there, I think. This is again, because I answered that yes, I did get a varsity letter. If you didn't get a varsity letter, that's fine. You're not gonna see this question. I received three varsity letters and I did receive one my junior or senior year. Again, it might seem a little redundant, but part of that is because these are some specific criteria for some of those scholarships. And so this is kind of how it filters you into that, being eligible for that scholarship. Volunteer community service. This is where you're gonna put, did you volunteer? Did you teach Sunday school? Did you teach uh, vacation Bible school at church? Were you um, serving at city mission? Um, did you collect coats for Christmas? Those sorts of things. You're gonna put any of those volunteer um, activities here. How long did you do it? How many hours a week or how many hours a month did you spend on that? Again, approximate. I know that you guys may not have necessarily put all that information down, unless maybe you were a National Honor Society or an organization that required those volunteer service hours, you might already have that. So put all of that in here and continue on. Now we're looking at college. So this is where you're gonna go or where do you uh, plan to go if you haven't made that decision. So we have five that are listed very specifically and that is because these are specific um, scholarships. So we've got some one that if um, it's a, say it's an Arlington student and they're going to Bowling Green, they would put Bowling Green because that would quali qualify them for one of those scholarships. We also have other because the others are fine. So I'm gonna mark other because I think I said I was going to University of Toledo. Um, I'm hoping to graduate by 2025. And in the upcoming school year, so next fall, where will you be in college? You will be undergrad freshman. So you're gonna mark that. I'm saying I'm going to a four year college. Maybe you're going into the trades or vocational school. You're gonna mark that. We have scholarships for that. Maybe you're just doing a two year school. You're going to Owens and then maybe transfer after that. Mark the two year. Okay. We have these for lots of different opportunities. I'm gonna get a bachelor's degree and I'm going to major in nursing. And if you wanna put something more about your major, you can, but it's not a requirement. The minor is a requirement to mark. Most people don't really have any idea uh, their freshman year, what they wanna do as a, as a minor. So you can just mark undecided. Have you been accepted? Yes, no, or pending? That pending is you, you're still waiting to hear. Um, that might be something that I reach out to you later, which is why I need that contact information. Is it outside of Hancock County? Yes. Full-time student? Yes. Where do I plan to attend? This is where you're going to list your top three um, because some of these, again, maybe you didn't mark Bowling Green State University, but it's in your top three. So I could, and you're pending. So I could come back to you later and um, just make sure of what you've decided because you might be eligible for something. So you would list your top three. I'm only gonna list University of Toledo simply because of time. Now you're gonna need a transcript. This is where your guidance counselor, Mrs. Barnhart is gonna come into play. You are gonna put her email address right here in this box. And I don't remember what that is off the top of my head. So um, I'm just gonna make something up. But she's gonna need to submit a letter, a transcript for you. Trust her on this. She does this all the time. She's a professional. She knows what she's doing. Um, you ask her to do that and she will. Most guidance counselors will wait until the end of the first semester so that we have a very accurate and up-to-date um, piece of information related to your schooling. Um, so if, <clears throat> excuse me, if you have um, submitted your application in here, but she has not yet submitted your transcript. Don't worry about it. She will. She's probably waiting. She also has lots of seniors to do this for. Um, so be patient with her. She knows what she's doing. What I have done here is I put in a template that you can use if you want to. Um, in that, I have put the deadline so that then she knows what the deadline is that she has to have that submitted. Um, and so I'm going to just copy and paste this um, template. 
So you've put her email address in here and then you're gonna click on this compose email button and I'm gonna paste that email in there. Now, I strongly suggest you look back over what you have here because you need to put her information. Oop. My computer seems to have a, my keyboard has a mind of its own today. And then please also make sure that you add your name at the end so that she knows who's sending this. Put a subject in there so she knows, oh, it's about transcripts. Again, you can use my template here or you can type in your own email in there asking her to, to um, submit that transcript for you. It's completely up to you. Once you have that, you're gonna hit send. And then right here you see email was sent. So now what's gonna happen is she's gonna receive two emails, one from you, that one that you just sent her, asking her to um, send in that transcript for you. And then she's also gonna receive another one from us that will give her the link that she needs to go to to upload that transcript when she's ready. So once you have hit send on that and you see that the email was sent, it's out of your hands, she will handle the rest of it and get that submitted for you. Additional requirements, you will need to um, type in here an essay for the selection committee to take a look at. Share information about your goals. Um, you know, uh, why do you, why should you be getting a scholarship over somebody else? What makes you stand out? So put that information here in the essay. Now, you've all taken composition classes. So do a good job with this. Do not type like you text. Make sure you've got capitals, you've got punctuation, spelling is correct. Um, all of that, those are, those are things that selection committees do look at, okay? So please take your time with this. Don't do just as I have done. Now this next section is specific requirements. There's a lot of little check marks here and I'm gonna mark a lot of them so that then you can see why later on, I'll explain that. Um, if none of these apply to you, there is a check mark for none of these apply to me. So it's required, so you're gonna have to mark something. So I'm gonna say I'm, that I'm a member of the credit union and my dad's a member of Legacy Farmers Co-op. And I, I said that my mom works at Cooper, I think, or somebody. Anyways, um, National Honor Society, I have diabetes, um, I live on a farm, I've been in the theater program, I was in Boy Scouts and I was in student government, like student council. So I'm marking a lot of those. Now you come to letter of recommendation. This is just like what you did for the transcript, only now you need somebody to write a letter of recommendation for you. Someone that is not a family member. It could be a teacher, a coach, um, an employer, um, a neighbor, a friend, a, a family friend that's known you for a long time, somebody that's going to write um, a good letter of recommendation for you as to why you deserve to be considered for scholarships through the foundation. So it's going to be the very same thing. You're going to put their email address in here. Okay, so whatever email address you have for them, you're going to put it there. Again, I have this template for you if you want to use it. Again, you don't have to use it but you can, if you want to, it's there. If you don't use it, please make sure that you're typing in something in this email in the subject so that they know what, what this is all about. Compose email and pasting it in here. Make sure that you sign it, remember, and that you put the person's name. Okay, subject. Make sure you put a subject in there so when it comes into their inbox, they know what this is about, okay? And then you're gonna click send. This is gonna be exactly like what you did with the transcript. Now it's out of your hands. It's up to the person that you sent the email to and they're getting two emails, the one from you and then one from us with the link that they can then go to to upload that letter of recommendation for you. So once you see that that's been sent, you're all done with that part, okay? I marked that I was in the Girl Scout in Boy Scouts earlier, so that's why this question is here. If you weren't in Girl Scouts or Boy Scouts and you don't mark that, you're not going to see this question. But I did, so that's why this question is here. Work experience. What have you done? Um, have you worked at um, 
Jolly Dipper? Have you worked at Archie's? Have you, um, are you working at Beer Barrel? What have you done? Did you mow yards for a neighbor um, all through high school? What sorts of things, maybe you worked on a farm um, at baling hay or something. Um, just put what you did, what was the nature of the work, maybe how many hours you worked there, an approximation would be good. And then are you currently employed? We'll say yes then it pops down to another question. If I had said no, this question wouldn't be here, okay? Um, I'm gonna say I work for Beer Barrel because it seems like that's where a lot of kids work. I work part-time and I get maybe 15 hours a week on average, okay? Then this is where you're gonna say, yep, everything I've put in here is true and accurate as best as I know it. And I'm going to sign, type in, typing in my name. Now, what you're gonna do, if you come down here to this abandoned request and you click on that, everything you've just done is gone. It means that you've decided you don't wanna apply. So if you're gonna do it again, you have to start over completely. Down here is also the save application button. You can click on this at any time during this process and it will save what you've already done and you can come back to it. So you can do this, um, work on it a little bit um, in the evening, and then you realize, oh my gosh, I've got a paper due tomorrow that I haven't even started yet. You've got to stop it, go to save application. And then the next time you come back, it's all gonna be there and you can pick up where you left off, okay? Submit application, that is, okay, I've got everything in there, I'm all done, um, I, I'm ready to submit it. So we're gonna submit application. And then it is what it's doing now is it's taking all of the answers to your questions um, in your application and it's matching you to any of the scholarships that maybe you apply for, um, that you qualify for is what I meant to say, sorry. So then it shows you the screen. This is awesome. This is a new feature that we have with our system. It shows you right now everything you've qualified for. Not necessarily that you've that you've earned that you've been awarded because we don't do that process until March. I send those out to the selection committees. March and April they review them, and May is when we start notifying students. But this shows you what all you um, are eligible for. So as you scroll down, you can see. Wow, look at all of this that I'm eligible for. Okay. Um, Say for example, I said I was going into nursing, this is a nursing one. So if you're majoring in nursing, this is a one for Hancock County. Um, I said that my parent worked at Cooper. So that's why this one popped up. So this is gonna let you know, these are all of the ones that you qualify for. And it gives you a little bit of information about that scholarship and the donor, okay? So then you scroll down and this, this is telling you, oh, you qualify for these, but there's something else you still need to do for these particular scholarships. So you can click continue. Again, you can stop at any time and log back on and check this again later. You don't have to do all this at one time. I click continue because I, I want you guys to see what it is, how it's gonna pop up. So again, here's all of the scholarships that it just told me that I qualify for and it's gonna tell me what I need to do. So um, we are up here on the Cooper Tire one, okay? So it's showing us that oh, I need a second letter of recommendation. This is exactly like what you did for the first letter of recommendation. Exactly the same, choose a different person, okay? Again, not a family member, but select somebody else. You can select that um, second person and that person can do a letter of recommendation for all of the rest of the scholarships you apply for. Okay, you only want to have two total people doing letters of recommendation for you. So you're going to do the very same thing. This is just like what you saw in the actual application. Then you're going to see, oh, for Cooper Tire, there's also an extra thing I have to do. I have to do an essay here. This is a requirement of the, of the scholarship. So if you do this recommendation, but you don't do the essay, when it comes time for that selection committee to take a look at it, they will not consider you because you did not do the extra essay that they require of you, okay? So it tells you if there's something more you need to do. Um, so Finley Rotary Club, let's go to that one, just again as an example. This one, yep, another letter of recommendation, it's the same person that you chose for this, the second one before, same person. And then they have something else they need you to do. So again, if you don't do this part, 
you won't be considered for that scholarship. Okay. Now, some of them um, are just, let's check this one. Okay. This particular scholarship, it's just a second letter of recommendation. So once you do that and you send that off, you can hit submit application. Well, I'll show you. Um, compose email. Please write me a good letter. That is not acceptable. <laughs> do not do that. I'm just trying to get through time. Um, click send. It's sending it. It shows. So now you can submit that application. Now you come up back up here, and that was the one we just did. It shows you the application has been submitted. You're done with that one. If it says draft, that means there's still something more you need to be doing. Okay. So that's where we're at. Um, it's a lot. I understand that. Take your time with it. Again, you can save it, come back to it, save it, come back to it. But as you can see, just by the way I answered those questions, all of these scholarships that I may be eligible to receive based on just this one application, okay? If you have any questions, um, you can go back here. You can go back to our website. Um, at the bottom, it has our phone number. So you can call the office um, and reach out to me, or you can also, um, our, our staff button has a place that you can email me um, and reach out to me. Mrs. Barnhart has my email address. If you've got questions, you can go to her and she can reach out to me on your behalf or give you um, my email. But um, take some time, look at it, have your parents help you through it. And again, if you've got any questions, go back to the tutorials on the logon page or go back to this video or give me a call and I'm more than willing to help you out. Again, deadline is Wednesday, February 3rd at 12 noon. Um, then we send it off to the selection committees and students um, will be, um, the winners will be announced in May at your senior awards night. So best of luck to you. I hope you enjoy the rest of your senior year and um, go Hornets. <laughs>